Hello, I'm Andy Rash, the technical trainer for DMAC Cranes and Components. In today's video, we'll take a look at another conical profile rotor motor, the KM. The KM is different than a KB in that it can direct feed to a gearbox because the conical rotor inside the stator does displace axially but does not move the motor shaft itself. So the motor shaft can contain a gear for the gearbox. KM motors can be found on older model DK chain hoists and travel drives on cranes from the 1990s. We checked the displacement of a KM motor in a similar fashion to the KB motor. We go through the hole in the center of the fan cover on the back of the motor. Notice I did not call this a brake cover. The brake cap is actually the rear cap on the stator itself. The rubberized brake lining is inside the stator attached onto the back of the rotor. So this large assembly is covering the fan, which is plastic underneath. Notice the louver is not a separately removed piece, as it was on a KB motor. So this is a distinguishing feature for a KM. A KM motor has a plastic fan with a center cap under the center of the hole in the back of the louver. So it's very important to never use a flat blade screwdriver or any pointed sharp object to do the axial displacement measuring. Remember in the KB video we used the blunt tip, flat tip Allen wrench and you must use that so you don't poke through any plastic when you take the reading on a KM. So let's take a brake reading of our KM motor. We'll push our O-rings up. We'll push in and release and the distance between the O-ring and the fan louver is our axial displacement. In this case it looks pretty close to 1.5 millimeters. Now that I measured my displacement, I'll check on my chart for a KM motor. We'll check the data plate, which is here next to the terminal box, and see that this is a size KM80 motor, which gives us a value of 1.5 millimeters to 3.00 millimeters. Our measurement was 1.5 millimeters, so we are at the minimum of our adjustment range, which is optimal. So this motor, as it sits, does not need an adjustment. But I do want to take time in this video to show you what to do in case you read a value of 3.0 millimeters to actually reduce it back to 1.5 to the minimum. These motors have a shim adjustment. To get to the shims, we have to remove the fan cover. Now that I've removed the bolts holding the cover on, we'll turn it off. Now that my cover is removed, I can see the fan and end cap of the motor. The lining is inside the end cap, so the end cap of the stator is actually the brake cap as well. The plastic fan has tabs on its hub that go up through the center of the brake cover. So the fan cannot come off as a separate piece. If it were to be removed, it has to come off as an assembly with the brake cover. And we'll show that in the second video in this series. For now, we want to call your attention to the shims. There are two stacks of shims, one stack on each side of the brake cap. A brake adjustment is to remove the equal number of shims from each side typically one shim at a time.
to maintain the minimum published axial displacement value. Notice that the shims have tabs to grab with needle nose pliers, and they do not wrap around the studs. They clip on, so we can remove them without total disassembly. Let me show you the brake adjustment procedure removing shims. For this adjustment, we will need to use metric sockets. To remove these shims, all we need to do is loosen the nuts that hold on the cap. Now that I've loosened the four nuts that hold the brake cap tightly to the shims, I want to relieve the pressure on the shims so that I can put a long nose pair of pliers onto the tab and remove them. To do that, I'll use a small pry bar or a small screwdriver. We'll separate slightly and then I can take my pliers on the tab on the shim, work it in there a little, unclip it and pull it out. I'll remove one shim from each shim pack. After an equal number of shims are removed from each shim pack, I can simply go back and tighten the nuts. It'll move the cap closer to the motor, making up for the brake wire. Torques of all the nuts are published on our job aid, which is a download attached to this video. You can keep making shim adjustments until you're down to the last shim. There must be at least one shim left in the pack. Always remember to take an equal number from both sides so that the end cap stays even on the end of the motor. Shims that have been removed are best kept in a safe location so that later you can see how many were taken out to give you some idea of the previous brake adjustments. Now we're ready to reattach our fan cover, lining up the data plate with the terminal box, and reinstalling our four screws. After those are installed, we'll recheck our axial displacement through the center hole. Now that the fan cover is reinstalled, we'll take one last reading with our wrench set up with the O-rings as an axial displacement measuring tool. We'll push in against our brake spring and let it kick back. Our distance between the end cap of the motor and the O-rings will be our axial displacement. Looks right on for one and a half millimeters. Watch in our next video. We'll tear the motor down for making a brake change. It would be what you'd have to do if you run out of shim adjustment.